This is JBigTicket23 from GreenPCGamers.com. In this video, we are going to show you our HP Z600 workstation that we upgraded and optimized for gaming or other high-end computing. So in the description of this video, we are going to post a couple links to our HP Z600 gaming computer blog pages. Now there are two links because there are two different version HP Z600 system boards. Uh, we show you the part numbers to the system boards in the blog pages um, so you can verify which blog page that you should be looking at for upgrades. And on these pages, you'll find everything that we install in this video and more. So if you're looking to upgrade your HP Z600 workstation, uh, definitely use these pages as a resource. All right, so let's get to our build. We have an HP Z600 V2 workstation. Uh, we have two six core Xeon X5675 processors. Uh, they'll run at a max turbo frequency of 3.46 gigahertz. We have 96 gig of DDR3 1333 megahertz ECC reg memory. We have a Micron 256 gig SATA solid state drive, and that's going to be our boot device uh, because we can't boot to NVMe.2 on this particular system. And uh, then one of the big upgrades that we're going to show you in this video is the Samsung Evo 970-500 gig NVMe.2 solid state drive install with PCIe adapter. Uh, we have a gigabit network port. The other big upgrade that we're going to install in this video is the EVGA NVIDIA GeForce 1660 Ti graphics card. And then we have a DVD-RW, a standard 650-watt power supply, and we are running Windows 10 Pro 64-bit for our operating system. So pretty nice config uh, for a system of this age. All right, so here's a closer look at the workstation and the components that we're going to we're going to install. Um, this system's going on like eight, nine years old now, um, but it's built like a tank. Um, here's the front control panel. Uh, we've got three USB ports, um, two audio ports, and FireWire. All right, here's the back of the chassis. Um, as you can see, we've already removed our PCI blanks for our cards that we're going to install. Um, here are the connections. We have two PS2 ports. Uh, six USB ports, gigabit network, and some more audio ports. So pretty basic system. All right, so we're going to remove our side panel and take a look at the inside of the chassis. All right, so these are the I.O. slots. We've got two PCIe X8 slots, two PCIe X16 slots, uh, 75 watt, and then two kind of ancient PCI 32-bit slots. So here's a closer look at the graphics card that we're going to install. This is the GeForce GTX 1660 Ti XC model. Uh, we've got a display port, HDMI port, and a DVI port. And this system will eat up three PCI slots. So make sure you have those slots available before you buy this card. All right, we do need an adapter um, to provide the eight pin power that this card requires. So we're gonna use a six pin female to eight pin male adapter. All right, here's our NVMe.2 solid state drive. Uh, it's already installed in the adapter. Uh, we've posted links to where you can buy these cards on our blog pages. So if you're wondering where can I buy these, um, check out the blog page. It'll give you all that information, including graphics cards and other components. All right, so we're going to remove our PCI retention clip so we can install our cards. First, we're going to install the graphics card. And that's going to go into a PCIe X16 75 watt slot. So basically line the card up into place and gently push it down into the slot. All right, now we're going to install the NVMe.2 solid state drive. This card's much lighter, much easier to install. But same concept, just line it up in the slot and make sure it's flush. Put your retention clip back on. Uh, next step is we are going to plug in our power adapter. So the Z600 has a six pin male power cable that's uh, set up for the GPU. So we're gonna use that and convert that to eight pin. All right, so here's the angle. We're just gonna plug this right into the GPU. Uh, make sure it is eight pin, because if you try to use six pin, uh, it will halt the system in, on boot up. All right, so the next step is after we install a big graphics card like that, we need to remove this metal foam bracket that's on the side panel. This is very easy to, to do. It involves uh, four T15 screws, and then it pops right off. If you don't remove this, you're not going to be able to shut your side panel. So easy to remove just like that. 
All right, so now we're going to put our side panel back on. And now we are ready to boot into our operating system. But first, here's a look at the back of the chassis with what the system looks like now with our GPU and our NVMe. All right, so we booted into Windows 10. Uh, first step that we're going to do is we're going to go to NVIDIA.com. Uh, we are going to go to GeForce Drivers, and we are going to install the latest driver for our graphics card. Uh, now, they have some different options to install the latest driver. Um, you can either find it manually like we're going to do. Uh, there is an auto-detect feature, um, and or there's something called the GeForce Experience that we're going to show you. Um, but first, we're going to find it manually. We just went to 16 Series, 1660 Ti. Um, you can download the latest driver that shows up below. So this is the GeForce Experience. You can download this, and this will actually have a driver upgrade feature built into it. Um, you can also use the GeForce Experience to uh, let the GeForce Experience optimize your system um, you know, to the best specs for gaming. Um, so it's kind of a cool feature. All right, so we did run a Furmark GPU benchmark. Um, and so this basically simulates an optimized game um, with your GPU. So... Under 1080, we achieved 94 frames per second. Um, that's average. That's pretty good uh, for a card that is under $300, especially on a system of this age. Under 1440, we averaged 65 frames per second. So pretty solid for, for this particular card and this system. So there wasn't a ton of bottlenecking that we saw uh, when it came to this card on you know uh, close to eight, nine-year-old system. All right, next, we are going to go back into Windows 10, right-click on Start, go to Disk Management, and we're going to enable our NVMe.2 solid-state drive. So you do this just like you would if you were adding another uh, hard drive. Um, and so we're going to name it Super Fast Drive, and this is where we are going to save all of our game libraries, large programs, or files, because anything that we save to the NVMe.2 solid-state drive is going to open up quite a bit faster than a conventional... Um, hard drive or a conventional SATA solid state drive. All right, so we're just verifying that under File Explorer that we can access the drive and it's empty. It's ready to load our games onto. All right, so we did run a benchmark on the NVMe.2 solid state drive as well. Uh, max write speed was 1.19 gig. Max read was 1.46 gig. This is pretty pretty awesome. Um, it's going to boost your I/O speed on an old HP Z600 workstation. Now, we have achieved um, quite a bit faster speeds with newer workstations. Uh, we actually have achieved over 2 gig max write and 3 gig max read, uh, but still achieving over, over a gig uh, write and read on an HP Z600 is, pr is pretty good compared to a conventional um, solid-state drive or a regular hard drive. All right, so we are going to go and show you our system. I'm um, showing you our X5675 processor, our uh, 96 gig of RAM. Uh, we do have a 64 bit OS installed, which is re required to install more than 4 gig of memory. All right, now we're going to go into the device manager and show you our drives, our NVMe, our graphics card, 1660 Ti. And we're going to show you our processors. So, so all 12 cores. Um, are showing up and you know everything's happy. You may not utilize all the cores for gaming, um, but if you do other projects, um, it's nice to have. All right, so we did do kind of a bonus test here, um, courtesy of CPUbenchmark.net. Uh, we did run a CPU test, um, and it uh, it achieved the 77th percentile, which is pretty awesome for uh, again a system of this age. All right, so we hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, please consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, thank you, thank you so much for watching.